in your world is. This is why also we are people of shukr, that we wake up. I have to give thanks for this life, this existence, this world. Your eyes, your ears, your mind, none of that is by chance. None of that can be taken for granted. And all of that in you is absolutely unique. You have what no other human being ever had or will have. Because everything God creates in the world is unique. Every leaf on every tree is unique, even though to you and me they look exactly the same. Every atom, every hydrogen atom is ex unique, even though they look exactly the same. But this is also one of the marvels of his creation and the fact that he relates to everything as it is. Again, we go back, you know, to the delusion of empiricism that we are this tiny little speck lost in a potentially infinite universe. So, and we've got 10 billion people, you know, 6 billion people, whatever, in generations after generations on this tiny speck of dust, how insignificant you are. What does good and evil mean? What difference does it make if you kill one or ten or sixty thousand or a million? Absolutely not. This is the ignorance of God and this is the test of God. And it shows us that this world is not worth the wing of the net, as the prophet said, because this is the testing ground. This is just to see who is who. What is your identity? Your identity is beautiful. And inshallah, you will realize that identity. And that will change the time. That is such an easy step for you to make, and it makes all the difference in the world. If we please God, if we are able to please God, that's all that is needed. That, you know, someone like Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, may Allah be pleased with him. This was Shaykh al Islam. Master of the Hanbali school, master of the Shafi'i school. He's the Shaykh of Ibn Taymiyyah, the Shaykh of Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah. You know, he was a man of Sharia. And he is born at a time when everything was finished. The Crusaders had taken Jerusalem, they'd taken Ma'abra, they occupied the land, there were fitness everywhere. The order of the assassins, Muslims were fighting each other, they could not agree on anything. And then when he appears and he begins to teach, decade after decade, who comes? Salah al-Din, Nur al-Din, and all their soldiers. These are the murids of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilan. And he is able to change the ulama. And he takes the path of al-Ghazali, Ihya ulum al-Din, and he brings it to life. How did he do that? Because he has no power. He's a human being like you and me. Because Everything about him, Sultan al Awliya, was Ridallah. I will please God with my soul. I will give him everything just to please him. And if you please Allah, then he can change the world just like that. Because it's all about that. We have to please Allah. We have to do the religion of the beloved, of the beloved messenger, the messenger who smiled who was always smiling. This is the Prophet Muhammad. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa would go out of Medina, you know, on any kind of a trip or an errand or a mission, and he came back to the Medina, the beautiful city of Medina, who were the first people to welcome him? The children. The children are waiting. When will he come back? When will he come back? And when they see the Prophet, the children rush out to meet the Prophet. So what kind of a man is that? Children are awliya. Children are saints. And they love the Prophet. This, this, is the, this is our Prophet. We have to be like that. We have to be like that. This is our legacy. Okay? And when we are like that, then we can give to the world. And the world needs this gift that we have. Okay, so uh, irada is a very important aspect of our belief. Again, when we talk about this delusion that we are so few, we are so little, lost in this huge universe, okay, this is because we don't know God and because we don't bring God into the equation. Because when we know the oneness of God, 
the necessity of his existence, the perfection of existence, which this world cannot be accounted for without that. You know? That that which has no existence from its essence, which is me and you and the cup and the pillar and the flower and the hoodhood, okay? That which has no existence. You didn't give yourself existence. You cannot do that. Your existence is impossible. If it were not for God who tipped the scales and said, you will be, and you will be like this, perfect. Because of all the things that you could have been other than what you are, you were chosen to be this way. Even if there might be a defect. You know, but you were meant to be that way. Because that's part of your perfection. That's part of your perfection. Some people are made blind, but they can see. Some people are given eyes, but they don't see, they're blind. Okay? But see, another thing too, is that quantitative science, empirical science, it must generalize, because it has to use comparisons in mathematics. So, for example, we have to say that this cup is just like this cup. Okay? And therefore, there are two of them. And I can count them, I can multiply them, I can divide them, right? So we have to say, for example, that all the leaves on this tree are the same because they're acacia leaves or they're lope leaves or whatever they make, but they're not. We have to generalize and we are allowed to do that. It's a type of najaz. We're allowed to do that to do science. But again, we must never forget that in fact, this was just a generalization. Every leaf there is unique. Okay? But when we make these generalizations and we quantify the world, this is also what makes it big and small and what makes the human being get lost in it. Okay?